Hey girl, are your healthy habits all over the place or non-existent? Do you wish you could find true food freedom, move your body for joy, and really just talk a little nicer to yourself? If you have tried to have it hack your health, but the strategies you've tried just haven't worked for you in your busy lifestyle, then this podcast is for you. Hey, I'm Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach, behavior change specialist, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I'm here to tell you there is an easier way than what we've been taught about our health and our habits. How do I know? Well, because I've transformed my own life through habit hacking and now my family gets the best of me and I now help my clients do the same. I'm now going to teach you how to create healthy habits and less time guilt-free for all seasons of your life. It's not your fault your habits haven't worked, my friend. We just have to do them differently. So are you ready to feel empowered and transform your habits and life? Then let's do this. Hey gang, welcome to Habit Hack Thursday. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Hey, just a quick update for you. I am so grateful and so appreciative of all of the votes you all gave me this past month in the Hot Works Virtual Instructor Competition that I am doing. And I'm so excited to tell you that I've made it on to the next round. So later this month, I'll be traveling to Texas to audition live and hopefully get one of the seven spots to be a virtual instructor over the next year. You know, sometimes I think it's really great. I've been doing this since my own journey back in 2015 of really digging deeper into my own healthy habits of trying something new. For at that first year, it was trying a Spartan race. And good golly, I kind of went all out with that. You know, from there, it was like, I'm going to get a lot of different fitness certifications, group fitness certifications, because I love doing this. And I feel like I meant to do it, but that wasn't easy. And then this last year, after I broke my tailbone and started going to Hot Works, I was like, I am meant to be on that screen and help other folks with hot works and I'm in the midst of actually getting my yoga teacher training certification right now and it's very hard just with habit hacking when to actually work on that. So I remember doing that when I was um, studying for my personal training certification. I actually had to habit hack that a lot more too. But this is not easy, but I think I need to talk the talk and walk the walk. If I'm going to tell you to try new things, do hard things, I'm going to do it too. So I'll let you know how it goes, but thank you so much for all of your support. I love teaching group fitness almost as much as I love talking about habits. I feel like they go hand in hand, that's for sure. And just thank you so much. I'll keep you guys updated on how things go. But today we're talking about food freedom, okay? We alternate our habit hacks every week, either around mindset, movement, or food freedom, and we're up for food freedom. Food freedom is always a hot topic. It's the most popular accelerator that we have. If you're like, what's an accelerator? It's my mini courses to help you accelerate your healthy habits. We dig deeper into my habit hacking system, which is focused around focusing on your basic fundamental needs, coming at it from a lens of atomic habits for women, and giving you actual habit strategies, habit loops within those three areas for you to start taking action because we know what we know we know we got what we got to do right and when it comes to food you're like okay i need to eat healthier i need to like nourish my body but i also don't want to restrict the rest of my life so we have it hack that together but in today's ep- and the accelerators they're available in the show notes all day long all all the time for you so go check it out but in the food freedom habits accelerator we actually dig deep into the subject we're talking about today and that is am i hungry or is this just a craving? Ooh, am I hungry or is this just a craving? Now there's a bunch of other factors we dig deeper into inside of the accelerator in regards to curbing your cravings and ensuring that you have healthy habits in place like mini meal preps and creating really simple meals like ingredient meals and a lot of other like unpacking diet culture BS when it comes to eating as well. That's a subject for a whole nother day. But if you need help in regards to, you know, more deeper habit strategies when it comes to food, I'm going to share with you my uh, five-night ingredient meal freebie. So this is a strategy I teach inside of the accelerator to help you create really healthy, simple meals without it, like, feeling super overwhelming. I can't do a long meal prep. I can't follow, like, a 20-step recipe. I don't got time or patience for that. Plus, I hate measuring things. I just, like, measure with my heart and throw things in. So if you need help... You grab the five-night weeknight 
ingredient meal freebie. It's a download, there's a grocery list, and there's meals on there that you can cook for five nights of the week. And spoiler, you can use them as leftovers for the next day. So grab it at bit.ly slash ingredient meals. It's linked in the show notes forever and always for you. So when it comes to hunger and cravings, how do we tell the difference, okay? So today we're gonna talk about the difference between hunger and craving. Then I'm gonna give you a couple of habit loops, one around hunger and one around cravings for when that hits. So first, let's just talk about the, the, the difference between them and then we'll habit hack it together. So here's six ways. So number one, it's an actual sensation. So hunger is like a physical sensation that arises gradually and maybe has symptoms like your tummy's growling, growling, you have a feeling of emptiness or even like lightheaded, right? I know I have felt all those when I've been hungry. Now, cravings, on the other hand, tend to be more specific and sudden desires for particular foods or flavors. Like if I see like an ad or like I'm on my period, I'm like, oh, like, like a chocolate chip um, ice cream cone sounds like really good right now. And it, I'm not hungry for that. That's like a craving. And it just comes out of nowhere. It's not the actual physical sensation. I'm not like aching for an ice cream cone, right? Number two, timing, okay? Hunger typically, typically, you know, occurs after several hours of not eating, right? And it may coincide with like your regular meal times. Like your tummy starts telling you, oh, it's about noon. I, this is when I usually eat lunch, right? Cravings, on the other hand, they can like pop up at any time, right? Regardless of how long it's been since your last meal, you're, I, I don't know about you, I love chocolate chip cookies, Bob, like, ooh, that sounds good. And I'm not hungry. It's not like a meal time for me. It just sounds good. Number three, food preferences. So when you're like genuinely hungry, a variety of foods can satisfy your hunger, okay? We actually have a little hack inside of the Food Freedom Habits Accelerator called the fish and broccoli rule. <laughs> you can only tell where we go from there. But but opposite of that, cravings often involve like a strong like desire for a very specific type of food, right? Such as chocolate, pizza, ice cream, and so on. I don't know about you, like sweet or salty. I feel like when it comes to like cravings, you're either sweet or you're either salty. Me, it's always sweet, <laughs> always. Number four, emotions. There's an emotional component to it. So cravings sometimes are more triggered by emotions or specific circumstances such as like stress, boredom, seeing a ad for like a particular food. True hunger is just primarily driven by the physiological need for nourishment, right? It's one of our basic fundamental needs. I know you can relate to that one a lot. A lot of us are emotional eaters. And one thing to help you with that, just a little extra habit hacking co coaching for you, is to track those emotional eating cues. We actually have an emotional cue tracker inside of the Food Freedom Habits Accelerator. Number five, satisfaction. I can't get, no. <laughs> okay. When you eat due to like hunger, right? You generally like feel pretty satisfied and full after consuming like an adequate amount of food, right? Cravings, however, may persist even after eating and they are not necessarily related to a physiological need for sustenance. Like you don't feel like full unless you ate a ton. Um, after eating, you might feel like over full and not satisfied. And that's a totally different feeling. Then lastly, mindfulness. So paying attention to your body and its signals to help you differ differentiate between hunger and craving will go a long way for you. So tracking this, taking a moment to check in with you before you go and Either you're hungry or it's a craving, you're not sure, I would HALT, that's actually an acronym for something we teach inside the accelerator, and ask yourself, are you actually feeling physical signs of hunger or is it more of an intense desire for a specific food, okay? So next, let's talk about a couple of habit loops. So we kind of talked about, okay, what are the differences? Now, how do we put this into action? Let's habit hack it together. You know how we do. So let's talk about a habit loop for hunger. So remember, a habit loop is a cue, routine, reward. This is basic habit strategy, but we take it next level because we do this from the female perspective because we got to do habits differently, y'all. There's a lot of different components that go into what we do. So the cue, so recognize, so this is for hunger. 
cue. You're recognizing your body's hunger signals or cues. So it may be like a growling tummy. You have a decrease in energy levels. You're feeling like lethargic. Pay attention to these signs because those cues are what is the actual cue that is telling you, I am hungry, it's time for nourishment. The routine is engage in a routine of providing your body with a balanced and nutritious meal or snack. So I always like to pro, um, pair a protein and a veggie, a protein and a fat together, always leading with protein because that is a lot more satiating for you. Then lastly, the reward. The reward for responding to hunger cues is providing your body with nourishment and energy, right? When you eat a balanced meal or snack, you, you feel satisfied. Your hunger is curbed. It's, you know, it's it's satisfied. You feel satiated and your energy goes up. So pay attention to how you feel after you eat and just noticing those increased energy levels, okay? Tracking this is super, super important. Next, habit loop for cravings. Ugh. So identify the cue. So the cue is the trigger that sets off the craving or the desire for a particular food. It could be a certain time of day. It could be an emotional state. It could be an environmental cue, like seeing a certain food, like on social media. Pay attention to what precedes your craving, right? A lot of times this is what some people would consider a bad habit. And we have to habit loop and habit hack this <laughs> loop that you have and replace it with something healthier for you, okay? So identify what the cue is that is leading you to craving a certain food. Next, the routine. We want to modify the routine. So the routine is the action you take place when the craving hits, when that cue is telling you, oh, I'm craving chocolate chip cookie. So instead of immediately giving in to the craving, find alternative activities or behaviors that replace that routine. So if you typically are going for a sugary snack, like that is me, or some, or like a bunch of potato chips, if you're salty, try going for a short walk. I love a hot cup of green tea, just the process of making it. I love that. Um, all my friends know, all my friends, my clients know that's one of my favorite habit hacks. Practice deep breathing or just get off of social media if that is what is triggering you. And the reward is reward yourself differently, right? Because before you were rewarding yourself with maybe sugar that helped you, you know, all that sugar helped boost the way you were feeling. You feel great and you're going to crash later though too, right? The new reward is the satisfaction or pleasure you de derive from satisfying the craving. So we're going to do an alternate reward that gives you that sense of satisfaction as well. So if you're craving chocolate, have a small piece of dark chocolate if that is what you really want instead of a candy bar, right? You can also experiment with healthy alternatives that satisfy your craving or on the other side, dig deeper into like, wow, I don't have a sugar crash later in the day. I feel so much better, okay? So I'm not saying res totally restrict yourself. If a craving hits, like like I said, have a piece of chocolate. Just don't have the whole dang candy bar because that can turn into a big habit in itself. And then you find yourself in a new habit loop of healthy ha unhealthy habits that aren't serving you. So I hope this was helpful. I'll give you a little food for thought, something to chew on, something to think about. I don't want you to restrict yourself. You know, it's okay to give in to your cravings here, there, but when we're constantly doing it, making a habit of it, that's where you find yourself in a habit loop of unhealthy habits. So friends, everything I talked about is linked in the show notes. If you want to try the ingredient meal freebie, go give it a shot. It's one of my most downloaded freebies because we, we don't got time to cook. We want simple. This is healthy. You guys will love it. Or grab the Food Freedom Habits Accelerator. It's my most popular accelerator. And I hope to see you soon, either inside the accelerator one, the freebies, or just following along on Instagram at emilynichols22. All right, friends, have a great rest of your week. Hey girl, real quick before you go, did you know I have a secret podcast where I talk all about why most habit strategies don't work for us women? Spoiler alert, it's not our fault. <laughs> Visit bit.ly slash atomic habits for women. It's linked in the show notes to access my secret podcast series and have your biggest aha moment about why and how women have to do habits differently. And if you love the podcast, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can find the show. Love and appreciate you, friend. We'll see you next time.